Welcome back everyone to Rising Game Changers Series 1 North America. I am Elizabeth joined by Gompers and White. Thank you very much to Sierra Dawn for taking the reins for a little bit, but I will take it from here. And we just watched Shopify Rebellion do the dang thing, as they say, because that was truly a certified Shopify moment, Wyatt. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm going to try to not sound too excited, but I mean, it's just exactly <laughs> what we expected. Like, it's what we expect every single time we see them. The more exciting part, honestly, was uh, seeing what Decimate could do as this newly signed team, newly put together roster. And they showed a lot of potential, and it was fun to see how much they could push Shopify as a new team. And honestly, they, they did enough to instill confidence in me that they will continue to get better and could definitely be a top contender. You know, make a decent run in this tournament. And then when we're looking to the future, like GC2, give them a couple months. And I, I really think they could be up there cracking into that top four. Yes, yeah, something I was thinking about while I was watching the games just overall today was just the parody of everyone here at Gompers. Everyone just seems to be, with each match and each round, improving and improving. And we have the bracket here. Um, as you can see, Decimate is now in the lower bracket. But if I were YFP or um, INFX, I would be a little scared facing Decimate. Yeah, honestly, I, I would be too. Uh, they had a really, <laughs> really good game that we just saw. Honestly, Decimate's looking like a pretty big threat down in that lower bracket run. So even if they do win that, it's going to be another challenge to face. But I, I think that kind of is a great story to tell. You, you get through Decimate, you, you kind of work your way up to possibly go up against Shopify Rebellion. Of course, we're going to have to see what's going to happen there. Uh, I mean, pretty dominant team, yes. but so far, a uh, lower bracket run looking... Uh, pretty, honestly, pretty exciting. Yes. I mean, the entire bracket is exciting. We have Shopify yeah. on top who, <laughs> you know, we saw Effie's take attack pause because Decimate was making them sweat a little bit, making them bleed. So, you know, it's anyone's game here in GC. And I think that's, again, that parody that I was talking about before. That's the best part of this, that everyone, everyone is ready to do the dang thing. And that makes me excited for not only series one, but series two and series three, because having world champions and you being able to take rounds and make the world champions sweat a little bit, that's a very good sign. I think Decimate should be very, very proud of themselves. But while they have a little bit of a break before they go to the lower bracket, we have another match today. It is Passion Project versus Fly Quest Red. Now, this sounds familiar. It should, because they've met once before in Open Qualifiers 2. And you might remember that insane map three scoreline. Does anyone remember the map three scoreline? Because I remember it. I think it was 20. Trying to raise my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Wyatt? Yes? Oh, oh sorry. I, oh, sorry, oh, Wyatt. Sorry. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. And sorry. she's right. It was 20 to 18. It, it was a 38 round game. I, I, Um, but the, obviously the other maps itself were rather close. You have Ascent 13-11, Icebox 13-9. Nothing really was like a 20-18. to 18, But why that 20-18, to 18, that's stamina. That's, you know, how deep does that strap book go? That you're asking a lot from both teams at that point. That is, that is a lot of stamina. I mean, it's, it comes down to the fact that both of these teams are stacked with great players they're the two teams to like evenly matched great players too to some extent because it's essentially two teams that have it's not even essentially they're two teams that have reformed with a bunch of the excellent players that last year were part of the big game changers 2023 narrative which is there are all these new teams that are rising to the top like that they're seriously competing with shopify i mean we saw shopify get beat by eg complexity in gc2 last year surprise you know knock down the x shopify team make it to the finals and now you just have this both teams this amalgamation of all these great players that were contesting for the top and they've been put together into these new rosters that we're going to see today it's so nice too and and honestly kind of refreshing to see like just an amalgamation of all of these new players because i i kind of like to see the combinations that you wouldn't even think of like jazzy with saboy and lazy lion and stable power pixel this isn't something i ever thought i would see <laughs> but 
passion project coming in. They knew that this would work out. They really, really uh, kind of worked it out inside of the scrims and whatnot, practicing to to really get this roster to a T. And obviously, they, they did take a, a map off of Shopify recently as well. So they're going in the right direction. You can see this team's potential. You can see that they have a great roster in front of them. Yes, that's why I'm so excited. I can't wait to get into the match today because, again, it's like that, that rematch that we're talking about. Know your enemy as you know thyself. You played them before. But something, someone I want to focus on, I think we want to focus on, is Lazy Lion. Why I'm going to throw it to you and just kind of throw it on the gauntlet for Lazy Lion. I mean, the ACS, just truly, they are such a get for Passion Project. Yeah, I'm a lazy lion enjoyer. Last year, <laughs> they were a breakout player, a name that I had not heard of at all first time. But they were competing at the top level, making it you know deep in the playoff runs. And they were a very impact player. And, you know, not necessarily topping the scoreboard every single game on, on the initiator at the time, but the kills that they were getting were very important. And the setup for the teammates was excellent. Like for me, one of the true standouts from last year. And so far, I don't think they've been putting up the exact same performance, but I have full belief that they can. And I'm looking to a game like this against a team that is super high level, super close, gonna be tight competition to step up and be at that level that I was so excited about when I was seeing it last year. Yeah, and you talk about not giving too much of that performance, but under a new roster as well, you new players, there's so many different people that shine a little bit more, like just because Lazy Lion is helping them uh, really push themselves in that role I guess more so Jazzy as well like just just really giving way to Jazzy and allowing them to play that duelist role and allowing them to thrive as well yes and also I want to give a quick shout out to Power Pixel for stepping in really not last minute but just stepping in a little bit last minute to uh, replace one of the players as they wanted to focus on school but Passion Project have a big task against them and it's to face Fly Quest Red. Now we've seen FlyQuest Red play yesterday. They are a fantastic team. We have Dodonut, Saunders, Sarbanthia, and Lace. Those are names you are terrified to hear that you're playing against just one on one. But to put them all together with Coach Jovi, formerly coaching EG's GC team, that is a spooky thing, Gompers. Yeah, I, <laughs> I I love this team, to be honest with you. And it, it, it is great because Lisa's smile is honestly so radiant and I, I love her so much. She's It's great because this whole team is not only is their gameplay super uplifting and, and they, they're, they're very, very hardworking team, but everybody on this team is so freaking fun to be around and they have the brightest smiles and the best time. And I, I think that's what really keeps them grounded to be honest with you. Well, don't be fooled by those smiles, Gumpers, because behind those smiles are some incredibly fearsome competitors. I don't know if, if our audience caught the replay package way at the beginning, but we saw Starbound's ace they, that they just pulled out of nowhere. You know, Starbound, they post, posted content today of just like their, their little vlog and drinking lots of water and staying hydrated, but then they pull out that in the server. And as you can never be unassuming of your opponents on FlyQuest Red, but we want to bring it over and talk about Lace. I'm gonna throw this to you again. Wyatt, because Lace is, again, either anyone from FlyQuest Red, you, FlyQuest Red, excuse me, you would be scared to face, but Lace, rhyme intended, is terrifying to face. Not rhyme intended again. Yeah, uh, yeah and you're throwing me off. And you're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, yeah, I'll just uh, continue being in my Stan era for the breakout players of 2023, but if we hearken back to GC2 last year, when Complexity kind of, you know, shocked the scene, made it to the finals, beat the, at the time, Shopify Rebellion team before they signed B1, that whole thing happened. Lace was the standout crazy player on that team, playing multiple different roles, smokes, initiators, and just fragging out of control on all of them. Genuinely, I, had her at like the top three players of last year in GC. She is truly one of the best and I'm always excited to see more of her. And with the way that this roster was constructed, I think it was really excellently crafted. She's in a great position here to continue to thrive 
where you have that support system that was so good on EG at setting up their stars, and then you have her and Dota Nut who can go crazy. Like I, I love what they've done with this roster. It makes a lot of sense. Great construction from FlyQuest. Yeah, I think when you see this roster, you see like, oh, I think I saw what they did here. I saw what they did here. I saw what they did here. You can really kind of see the puzzles fitting so perfectly together with Dota Nut just absolutely going crazy. You know, it's it's so exciting to see it all. I'm even using the word exciting. I'm just, I'm so excited that GC is back and that we're here and that I'm here. But it truly is to see FlyQuest Red pull it all together like this and come together like this. They are, again, very formidable and very, very scary. And we're ready for map select. So, and remember, map games can be won within map select itself. And here we have it. We have FlyQuest picking Sunset, pa Passion Project picking Icebox, and our decider being Ascent Gompers. I mean, we the last time we saw Icebox, we saw Shopify absolutely destroy. But this is now <laughs> a different story. It's a FlyQuest and Passion Project. What are your thoughts on the map select? Honestly, I think this works out pretty well in favor of FlyQuest, if I'm being brutally honest with you. Be brutally the, honest. The, Speak your truth. The ice, it's its every single map that I genuinely think FlyQuest Red just have down to a T, Sunset being their absolute best map possible. I, I, don't, I cannot see them losing anytime soon on a map like Sunset, but I, I guess with Passion Project as well, like it's the unknown. It's the unknown of a new team, the unknown of new play styles and, and new strats that might come out that might surprise you. So if there was a map to do it, it might be Sunset set but uh, definitely FlyQuest having the advantage in my opinion here mm. yeah i am interested in uh what's going to happen when we get to icebox in a set just because i associate dodo nut in my brain so much with playing a raise yes at least to me always like the absolutely out of control <laughs> maps from dodo nut are always on raise the jet's super solid too and there's like barely a drop off in the stats. So that is something regardless though that I do want to keep my eye on. Sadly, no bind. We won't be getting any 50 round OT games. <laughs> at least, well, maybe at least could be on a different map, I oh, guess. Oh, you just but. spoke it into existence, White. You jinxed it. No, I think that does the opposite thing. Oh. Because we were like, oh, surely there won't, or well, I don't know. I think we opposite jinxed the 13-0 thing and then it didn't happen. So I feel like I'm doing the same thing where it's not going to happen. We'll get some 13 11s though, but no oh. 50 round OTs. <laughs> okay. I don't, I'm not feeling it today. <laughs> so good games, but not super, super long games. So we don't have to rush to bed and finish all our work early, yeah, right? Exactly. We can still make dinner, yeah. you know, do our like long distance FaceTime calls, if you will, you know, all that stuff, all that fun stuff, um, if we had partners or whatever. But moving- um... <laughs> You don't have to call really? me out you're... like that, honestly. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? You're, you're bringing this one into GC as well. Like Liz, you gotta, it's, it's rent free from, from no, it's to absolutely, it it's go. rent free. <laughs> you don't have to bring it everywhere. Oh, it's, so always, sad, it's always with me. Um, but something um, I also wanted to bring up is our very real, very official, and very, very 100% true, can't ever be considered anything else. Uh, series one power rankings brought to you by Mimi and Bala. That was a very Jersey Bala, but well, Those Mimi. guys don't know what they're talking about. Oh! At all. Say, Let's bring it up. Why? <laughs> why? Why don't they know what they're talking oh about? My oh gosh. my god! The ball is crucial. Okay. Shot. <laughs> there are... There are... <laughs> yeah, why are they doing dirty like that? <laughs> there are... I think this is pretty good. I, there are some things I might change. I, I mean, I agree with the Shopify Rebellion. I, I would say I might bump FlyQuest Red up to second. I don't think Passion Project should be up there. I think they should at least be third. Um, and maybe, maybe, maybe bump up a nice, a nice YFP. I, I, I don't know. You, you call me wrong if you want. That's, mm. my, That's my opinion on it. That's my take. I don't know if I'm gonna call you wrong. <laughs> I, do I it. think okay, do it. honestly, they did Mimi and Ball, they did an alright job. I'm not I'm not mad at this. <laughs> You're I think this flip I think this is fun. No, I'm not I'm not flip flop. No 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 no. I assume <laughs> let's be clear, I assume they did a bad job. That doesn't mean they did. <laughs> I saw the list and I was like, oh, okay. See, Ball even did it with stuff. his eyes closed. Yeah. He's that. he's Mimi, like, oh, I got this. <laughs> Mimi's, Mimi's like, do you see my rankings? Do you see them? <laughs> staring through my soul right now. I think it's gonna be interesting because today it's, you know, obviously it's not like the permanent, like absolute 100% result, but we will see number two and number three duke it out. You know, Shopify Rebellion, of course, right now are absolutely proving that they deserve to be number one. No ifs, ands, buts are about it. Uh, they are reigning world champions are proving every single day why but passion project and FlyQuest right you know they i this match is going to be so important for them as well as the, how the greater audience sees them
themselves just to like how they perform, how they perform against each other. You know, have you learned your lesson from op the open qualifiers too, Wyatt? Uh, wait, have I learned my le wait? Which lesson? <laughs> or up the way I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> the, the absolute way that your audio I was... is cutting out, and I don't even know what it is. Just yap with on Why? I can't believe you still haven't learned your lesson. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. You're so right. <laughs> what I meant to say is, um, what I what's happening is, have you learned your lesson at this point of just, like, you played against each other before. You know, again, like I said before, know thy enemy as you know thyself. Right. It's round two. What have you learned? Can you act on it? I'm partial to thinking that Jovi is very keen on learning those. Coach Jovi for FlyQuest Red is very keen on making sure those lessons are learned and acted on, Wyatt. And that's valid. But also, <laughs> I will not tolerate underrating Coach Joseph oh, no, no, on no. the passion project side. No, Joe. We will never under, underrate, under, underrate Coach Joe. <laughs> Because I'm bringing back the 2023 Coach Joe narrative. We, Mimi and I, we kept going back to that one. We loved the Coach Joe narrative last year. Every time <laughs> Complexity were playing, we brought Coach up this Joe. one interview about how much Coach Joe came in, uh, coming into that team was just taking Cole to the next level. It was a whole thing. Mimi and I loved that <laughs> narrative. We kept running with it. And I'm bringing it into 2024. Passion Project with Coach Joe versus Coach Jovi. Listen, they both... They know what they're doing out there. They know mm -hmm. how to counter strat each other. Mm -hmm. I respect both of them. They both done a great job with GC teams in the past. I think that's why, you, but you're setting it up, Why? Like, this is why this match is gonna be so amazing and so important. <laughs> What's the work that they have put in, you know? Mimi so. just messaged me. I love the Coach Joe narrative. And, <laughs> and she's so right. It's our truly our greatest narrative. We, Mimi, we will keep the Coach Joe narrative <laughs> alive for you. Uh, but, I mean, let's talk about it a little bit more, Wyatt. Because you're bringing it up. I brought up Jovi, and you brought up Joe. What? Uh, you brought ask it up. Ask the question. Oh, okay. I, don't know what, I don't know what else to say. I can ask the question. <laughs> I, We're giving Joe 40 minutes in the pre-show. We're... <laughs> this is the narrative you wanted, Wyatt. <laughs> this is the I narrative mean, you wanted. <laughs> I, I'm not really sure where to take it further than everything I said. I'm going to be honest. Okay, well then, Gompers. I think I did my spiel. I. What do you see? How do you see this shaking out, Gompers? Because I, it's not really a prediction per se. Because I'm not going to ask you for score lines or how anything is going to go. How? What do you see these two teams putting up against each other? Is it a new comp, new strats? What's the deal? I just see, man, that's a great question. To be honest, <clears throat> I see a lot of, honestly, just a lot of back and forth between FlyQuest and this team. I genuinely believe, I was going to say their abbreviated name, but I'm no, not no, going no. to do that. No, no, no. <laughs> but FlyQuest, Fly Quest, I, I genuinely think, obviously with the games before, they, they, did, they are having this rematch. They played each other prior. And we kind of have a feeling, I, I mean, it, it, they were very, very close games for each and every map. So at the same time, this team, they are familiar with each other, but it's pretty evident there is an extent to that. So I I don't even know. To be honest, <laughs> I'm just I'm just waiting to see. I think FlyQuest, if, if I were to give a, a say as to who I think might run away with this, I think FlyQuest will. That's just my opinion. This roster has been together uh, for the longest time already. So... I'll, I'll give it to them. I'll give it to them. Why? What about you? Mm. I will also go with FlyQuest in the close win. Okay. I just, I I said it before, but I do love the way that they constructed this roster. All of the pieces fit together nicely. The one player that I'm going to be looking at in particular in this game to step up for their side is going to be Sonder. Sonder mm. was regarded as one of the best in, in GCNA for a super long time. And that's not to say she isn't now. Right. Um, but, you know, her heyday was when she was really playing the duelist with that original Shopify roster way back. And then had some role swaps, has picked up the initiator. And I, I don't think she's been at the peak that we saw her at previously. So I'm looking to her to, to you know, reach those heights when it's crunch time and we're in you know, these big games, because we've seen her shine before. I mean, on the global stage at LAN internationally. Um, so she can absolutely do it. And, and I'm, I'm looking to that from her because for me, it's been for the most part, the other players on Shopify or excuse me, FlyQuest stepping up.
Yes, and I, I mean, I know that FlyQuest bingo card is out there somewhere, and I believe a caster saying it's Sondering Time is on there. And for all our bingo players at home, I'm sure that'll be a great one to have. <laughs> Who's casting this game? It's it's Ender and Mimi. <laughs> oh, Ender's going to say it. Absolutely. And, yeah, right, and, all right. I was going to say, if it's Ender and Mimi, Ender will say it. If it's if Van Silly is involved, he would say it. <laughs> but I, you can trust Ender to get that line. Well, we see Sonder on the Breach, actually a favorite pick of mine on Sunset on a lot of different maps, but a little difference here on the comp. We have, uh, you know, Power Project taking Jet versus the Rays. Of course, they're not on the Rays, as Y talked about. They have an insane Rays. Uh, but Gompers, what's the first thing that stands out to you with this agent selection? Honestly, I'm going to say the Harbor, mm -hmm. even though that, that I feel like that shouldn't be too much of a surprise. I really like the Harbor. Uh, as of recent, I think he adds such great value to just applying pressure, but also just zoning players in. And I think that Thea is going to do a great job at that. If anything, Thea might do the best job at playing Harbor on a map like Sunset. But I, I think that's the most interesting to me. I am really excited to see how they, they kind of dissect this for FlyQuest. Yeah, I totally agree. The solo Harbor smokes is very interesting. Like We've been seeing a lot of, you know, Viper here, double smokes with... Uh, Viper Omen type thing going on and on Passion Project they're just going to have that solo Omen so you know, a, a little bit out of the ordinary but specifically FlyQuest for sure it'll be interesting to see how this comp is actually going to play out I am very excited for this comp because we have Lazy Lion and Lace on the same, not only the same role, but the same agent, the two players we highlighted during our time here speaking, yapping, if you will. Um, so we're very excited to see the matchup, but it is FlyQuest Red versus Passion Project. We're going to take a little bit of a break because Ender and Mimi are your casters and they're just going to take it away. So friends, game's all yours. Thank you very much. Yes, this is going to be a very exciting game to get underway. Last time we saw these two teams play the finals of the second qualifier, 20 to 18, the final score, Christy. It was an absolute banger. It went the whole distance, and it was a dodo nut that dropped 47 kills on that map in 38 rounds, but couldn't get it across the finish. Now we've got a battle here for the two best teams in the league. I think everyone would say right behind Shopify Rebellion and uh, kicking it off in the main stage here. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. And the winner of this match, a chance to play against Shopify Rebellion to fight for a slot in the finals. It's Sunset to kick things off, and it's Passion Project taking B main control. Yeah, we'll actually see FlyQuest putting down this wall early, Unstable okay. going in quick and just popping ahead for a kill. Great little opener there, and I don't think Unstable's going to be stopping anytime soon. FlyQuest not quite fast enough on these rotations to get back into the site. Good spam there by Sabui. That'll further this lead for Passion Project. Plant to come down and they even have a super late lurk working through A. Yeah, that's a crazy timing Jazikin's going to be able to take, and because FlyQuest lost two players initially, they've got to work their way back in very slowly, opening up time for that flank. There's also Unstable on the relurk late through market. Dart to re-clear. They know that everyone is off-site for Passion Project. FlyQuest forced to fight forward. Donut needs to win this one, and she doesn't have support, but still gets the job done. Stun in hand power pixel goes down. FlyQuest winning the trades, but it's only down to one, and that flank has been activated. Jazzy tags them, and well, Starbound, it's just too much to deal with. Passion Project take the pistol. Really great opening there from Unstable. They do an absolutely fantastic job just completely disrespecting the harbor wall over in B main, which I, I, I was wondering how uh, PP were going to get through that one, and they just end up blitzing it straight up. I'm curious to see if they continue playing yes, this sort of style, like very fast um, with that That's jet, because that is one of the big differences compared to a lot of the meta compositions on this map that would usually be incorporating the rays. But I think uh, for Passion Project, uh, usually they prefer to put Jazzy Kittens on a rays uh, on rays if they are playing a rays map so if they want to play single duelist unstable on jet seems to make a little bit more sense for them as a team yeah it absolutely does talking about the comps i want to ask you about this harbor it's it's pretty rare you see teams play the solo harbor or even play harbor at all on this map what do you make of it uh, honestly, I, I saw FlyQuest play a little bit of it previously, and I liked a lot of their ideas on the attacking side, usually using the Harbor Wolf to dominate mid control, and sometimes even, you know, allow them to push all the way towards defender spawn and split into a site from very, very deep on the map. But I do think on defense, it's going to struggle. Uh, Harbor is very limited by not having really global smokes, and uh, that means that you're going to be leaning your stall much more heavily into one side than Hold the other. On. Watch this, though. Sabui. Ooh, just catches 
the edge of her, but manages to paranoia and get away. That's good support from Power Pixel, so a site will be taken here, and that danger factor of this flank seems to be dis diminishing now as there's a late backstab from Sabui. Sabui is still waiting it out. They've got a camera in main to spot it as well. Jazzykins does fall, though, and FlyQuest are already here on site. Spike has yet to be planted. They're waiting for Sabui, and when that timing will strike. One left. kill already, and Sabui's They're in the lead because B site's completely open. Okay, full rotation. Out of passion project. And FlyQuest is going to be far too late to build a contest. The spike will go down. How do FlyQuest want to retake this? They have the option to go main or into market. It looks like market is where they want to go. Door? Is that door closed? Just barely? So instead, pulling all four players back into mid, try and Here. spot out if any players were left there a little bit later, and they have the option to send Starbound in through market solo as the rest of the team clears into Boba. Enemy tag. Drone up, spots three. Towards that spawn side. Lazy Lion has further util to stop, but Starbound's Ooh. found a kill in mid. But now the priority just comes to locking down the spawn side, and Fashion Project will be able to do so nicely. So two weapons lost, but... Not the worst of anti-eco conversions, all things considered, for Passion Project. Yeah, FlyQuest just got super, super active there on the eco, walking up through mid. And when they didn't run into everyone, they're like, hold on, that's a little bit suspect. Continued on going. But I think good mid-rounding there from Passion Project, realizing that so many players on the flank, that information Sabuya was able to pass along. And then, hey, b site completely open. No one's going to be waiting around in spawn either. So they take that timing and get there very nicely. Yeah, this Passion Project roster kind of continuing on what Complexity was building at the end of last year with Jazzikins going into the IGLing position with the Coach Joe narrative. Uh, and and them really putting together a, a strong team that didn't work out with that particular roster. But they picked up some great names in this offseason. Very clear competitor here with Fly. How do they manage this eco round? Unstable has the sole rifle for the team. They're looking to get into mid. It's just Lace on the other side who's going to fall back here. Sondra had the stun in hand in case they wanted to refight onto that line. And they do end up using, but mainly just to force Passion Project back into market. They're going straight into Thea, who falls instantly. Now Starbound alone on the site. That was a dart-stun combo. Beautiful to utterly shut down Lace's position. Now trouble in Paradise for Starbound. Still has their trips to work around, but Unstable is wrapping this pillar. Is it going to be a fair 1v1? It will, but Unstable wins it. Sandra on the other side has picked up a few critical kills, but the trades are in swiftly. Dodo Nut! Last time, she played this team. She nearly dropped 50. They lost. She wants it this time. 1v1 against Jazzy. Plant coming through. Spike planted. Cam won't spot Dodo to start. She holds her nerve. Drop in. Jazzy will note that. She'll rewrap to May. Dodo now has to pull out this dart. Time continues to tick down, and she's not sure where Jazzy is. But the Cypher have gone. Nade into main. Tap on the spike is the wow. attempt, but Jazzy picks the swing perfectly. Passion Project convert their bonus. That was gnarly. Jazzy just instantly the swinging she on the away. top, like fully ready. Knowing that the clock was ticking down and she's gonna have to get on the spike. Very nicely done there. One enemy remaining. And that's on the bonus, just the, the sole rifle in the hands of Unstable that Jazzykins is able to eventually convert with. Jazzy, in that play, ended up picking up a rifle from backsight and repositioning for that one. Now it's FlyQuest with five sheriffs to their name. And ult on Dota Nut, so don't discount them so quickly in a round like this. But as you can see, Starbound doesn't have any utility to really set up towards that B site. It'll be a late tripwire and a camera into B main, so not the worst that could happen at the end. I think that mid door was also closed, which gives them a little bit more security on that side of the map. So if the solo harbor isn't super strong, it's stalling out these sites and cycling smokes. What's the wind condition for FlyQuest on defense? Uh, I think kind of what we've been seeing already, where they have to really lean heavily into their strong side, playing behind the harbor, fighting forward, and then mass rotating. Their cypher side of the map, starbound, they can play a little bit more passively, like they are in this one, and then look to retake, swarming into that site with all those smokes. This time it's going to be heavy in through market, but once again, fairly easy plant here, and uh, unstable is going to be a big problem back site. Dodo's going to use that ult, and she does find unstable, but the trades are coming through. Nice spray control by Power Pixel. Stun comes up and power pixel overwhelmed so it's actually a 3v3 now but spike planted and Sabui Sabui has to cancel that flank the plant is not for them at all it'll be 
Ashen Project playing three in through main, 3v3. Smoke dropping in just a moment here, and they're not on the spike. Lace gets three on the Sheriff, and Sonder finishes the job. FlyQuest went out there with one HP on Starbound. How's that gone wrong for Passion Project? FlyQuest looking stunning in that retake, starting off completely separating that site with the harbor wall, and then taking the risk, honestly, to invest that Prey Zoltan. Just converting off of it. Beautiful shooting by Lace around that Passion Project definitely should not have lost. Yeah, it looks like Passion Project may be sending too many players to go play in main. Those two players on site, Unstable and uh, I believe it was uh, Sibui, were just completely isolated for themselves. Ended up falling, one gets traded out from the rocket, the other can get a few before eventually going down. Uh, but those retakes from FlyQuest are going to be very powerful. Again, when they're able to stack up, play together, that is where their strength is going to be. Although, interestingly enough, it is Theo playing the solo A site on this map right now, which feels really hard to do. I, I think they're just going to play completely off that site, as a matter of fact, because Harbor cannot anchor on their own. Yeah, but Harbor does make those retakes a lot easier, especially when you have a Hunter's Fury up like they do in this round. Maybe just want to play back, avoid the possibility of that breach ult that Power Pixel is just one orb off of, and they're going to look to claim here in A main. Yeah, the weirdness is that they have no info on this A site. The the rays and the breach are playing on the same side as the cipher camera. There's a trip in Starbound's pocket, but they didn't cast it this round. A little bit odd. And this round, Passion Project are going to be able to find that window to make use of that. We'll keep our eyes also on Subui inside of mid because there's no trip or anything top mid. That late flank can definitely be a problem or hearing the rotations backstabbing into market. But hey, they are on the solo anchor just from back behind the smoke. It's a spam kill. Now here comes into play that ult for FlyQuest. Tap to come. Hunter's Fury is ready to go and it's top insta. Reply from Power Pixel and ult. Anticipating a flood, but no flood was to come. Instead, it's just ult for ult, but it's a flank activated. Sabui whiffing those shots in mid a tragedy for Bastion Project. They're down by two in numbers. Have to hold base site. They'll try and swing into Starbound, and that's not a winnable task. They find them both. It's unstable in a 1v5, and the force just too overwhelming. Beautiful retake from Fly. Yeah, once again, it's it's the opening kill from Thea, and then a little bit rushed on those fights in mid from Sabui. Went to try and fight the first player crossing instead of waiting for the second. Second player is always the better player to swing on. Uh, the first one, not quite as prepared. But uh, regardless, FlyQuest end up winning that round, and you can see sort of the power of those harbor smokes in the retake. No one's going to be able to run on through those. A gorgeous stun setup from Power Pixel, I do believe, on that one. Enables their teammate to get a couple of kills. And in a world where so many teams have moved away from Breach on this map, you're really seeing the value in it from both teams. In particular, Sonder and Lace's Utilin combo. That stun going in the same time as the dart has provided so much value on these retakes for Fly. And now, Passion Project, just the rifle in the hands of Lazy Lion. Unstable quickly in here, dashing forward the blind and fans the kill. Unstable still looking for another as Thea comes around the corner, but FlyQuest are quick to shut it down. They were ready to trade on that one. FlyQuest react by pushing deep back through mid, and oh, didn't deal with these players who made it out onto B. Jazzy, though, finds Last a little angle, but can't quite find her shot. So, FlyQuest will clean, clean this one up. Quite nicely, three to three. Ever since winning that that thrifty round on four, looking real strong for themselves. But now here's where ults come into play, because Thea and Sondra have two of the best retaking ults in the game. Harbor and Breach completely ridiculous. On top of that, FlyQuest economy looking very, very strong. So I think of all the rounds, this might be one where FlyQuest play even more passive on the defensive front. I'm seeing three players bunched up in mid, maybe ready for Dota Nut to dive into tiles. That'll be the idea. Sonder was considering a stun there. But they don't hear anything early. I think we're waiting to react off their opponent's information. Now they hear noise in A main, so the rotate will come through and they can set up to play Flood on this side of the map. How quickly do they want to move off of this one? I I'm already seeing Dota Nut get into that corner over in shop for a moment there. Ready to pop out in a second, but it, it, the second Passion Project break these trips and, and start to try and plant a spike, those ults are going to come in big time. FlyQuest check mid. Now they can focus their attention on A. Hunter's Fury. That's coming out of this attacking side to try and give space 
for these members of the squad to get out onto the site. That's good tags onto two from FlyQuest, but these retake ults still an issue. They need to disrupt this setup. Unstable needs to get ahead of it. Swings there, but they're stunned, knocked straight up into the sky, and Sonder contends with them quickly. Passion Project cut them down as Power Pixel finds another, and it's left all on Dodo Nut. He's locked out in the corner and flanked by Jazzykins. Great reactions from this attack. Oh yeah, Jazzykins, an absolute hero in that round, ends up going cut, going through mid and cutting down Thea. And I think FlyQuest, we actually saw a pretty big gap in their play, uh, game plan in that round. They were obviously looking to retake on both A and B, but it was Thea solo anchoring B, and because there was no info on that side of the map, and Thea had one of the big ults that wanted to be involved in the retake, <sighs> Thea was like getting ping-ponged back around in spawn, and ends up trying to run over to rejoin the team. Jazzykins is there with that lurk in mid, hears those footsteps the whole time, and gets the kill. I feel like FlyQuest need to play stronger away from their Cypher so they can maintain information on their weak side of the map. If they keep rotating into Cypher, they're going to have a lot of holes that Jazzykins is going to try and poke through. FlyQuest yet to really contest space towards A main, so Passion Project has consistently been able to walk up into Elbow on A and get out onto the site, and it's the case again this round. It's It's so weird. They've they're really just leaving A completely open, and hey, that that's fine. You know, as long as the, the lurks don't end up punishing you. I wonder if Pash Project ever tried to get that active lurk that we saw from Jazzy on the first round when he went through elbow, but we'll see. FlyQuest for the meantime, looking to get a big flank going potentially. Or maybe just break this trip and fall back. It's going to be the second attempt at the same situation as last round. A 5 on 5 retake on the A site. Nice has an operator, but she'll start droning from spawn. Harbor alt push. The flank is the focus of this one, and that paranoia will be able to slow this down. Satchel up for Dodo. She's got the first, and eight is good. There's two players stuck in that corner, and they have to fight forward now. Sabui gets two. They can do more as well. A third kill found, and Passion Project lock it down. Back-to-back -back post plant secured on A. Sabui just completely owns in a main right there. That was fantastic and not an easy position to play at all. FlyQuest unloaded the Harbrol. There were paint shells. There were satchels coming their way. But Sabui holds their ground. Gets those shots off. Very nicely done from Passion Project to recognize the flank coming in. And that would be FlyQuest Red calling a timeout. I'm interested on the approach here. Thus far, as we were mentioning, they haven't been fighting in main control, but look at this comp. You see that harbor push wall. You see the breach stun. There's a lot of utility with these line control focus that a lot of teams, I think, would invest into that space. I wonder if that will be the change for Fly. Yeah, I feel like FlyQuest need to start playing more aggressive on the extremities, like you're saying. And I don't really mind if it's A main or B main. I just think they need to fight on the opposite side of the map compared to the Cypher. And all things considered, like, we kind of know that for FlyQuest, defense should be the harder side of the map. Like, Harbor just does not function very strongly sure. as a solo controller on defense. As soon as you have a Viper or any other controller, Harbor's going to be fine on defense. It's no real problem, but... Right now, they're kind of banking on the fact that Starbound can stall for themselves over on whatever side of the map they're going to be playing, and that Thea can get some kind of a push going on the other, but it's felt like FlyQuest have played almost no info style on their map, where they have three players kind of floating around top mid. If Passion Project ever commit multiple players into mid, those fights will go well, but they're not. Passion Project are just walking up A every round and taking the space for free. This goes here. So out of this timeout, there. What does FlyQuest change in their approach? Good enough position towards A main, just to try and break that cam, and actually just kind of attempting to solo control this space with a dart and a Roomba, but that's not going to work out one way from the other side, and Passion Project have the space they were looking for into mid now. That's Jazzy <laughs> lurking with an op, cuts the it down, no smokes for the defense. Yeah, I love that that read. Fast Project have seen that sort of, you know, walk through mid in two or three rounds already. Jazikin says, give me an up, I'll get a kill, get out, no problem. That came after FlyQuest used a push wall in B main at the start of the round, gave up that space. Here. So now their breach player, Saunder, has to be the solo B anchor on that side of the map. The rest of the team getting active, walking up into A. That'll be Lace accompanied by Dodo. But Dodo's now leaving. Dodo falls out. Yeah. Take flight. And the reclear's coming, drone up. Lace has to fall away from that space. We'll rejoin up with Dodo and hold on to A, but that was never where Passion Project was going to finish this round. They've already started to work back over towards B, and the site is open. Sonder has absolutely no idea what's going on towards the other side of the map here. 
The calling Careful from Jazzy there. here has just found all the holes in FlyQuest so consistently. It left. is really nicely done. B site completely open, committing a lot of utility on it just in case someone was hiding out on this side of the map. And if they run into any problems on the post plant, Dodo's got the showstopper, so good luck. Um, if FlyQuest are able to get some space back into the map. Passion Project fell victim previously when they played too heavy in main. They've got all five players there. The key to this round is Dodo not. She has a rocket online, and she's ready to take into this site. Nade out, thrown to guide her in. There's the rocket. Jazzy was spotted in main. There's another player hiding behind this box. Can Jazzy connect? Can she find her mark? Rocket goes deep, and it doesn't find a single soul. Now Passion Project will fight back in. Aftershock committed, They're but sticking. Blaze is sticking. What? They get her off at just the last second, and Starbound is stuck out in the open. And down two. They were a millimeter away from stealing that one. But it's Passion Project instead. Woo! Okay, a little bit too close for comfort on that one, I'll say. Unstable and that lazy like lines. Double second, replay. If if even yeah. that. Yeah, if that if that cage lasts, it's over. Because no one was spamming. I think from Maine you had Power Pixel that unloaded a full clip, was trying to get the blast off, but didn't quite make the connections there. Unstable though, very nicely right done running in with Lazy and the Lion on that reflank. And that sort of uh, makes up for the previous round where th problems came to them when uh, of course there was that plant not for market and they were going for a reflank. Repeat of the pistol round here. Yeah, fast control from Unstable, stun up. Second stage of this exec, yet to come. Just gonna grab that orb and back away instead. This is a much more comfortable round for Fly, though. They're rotating away from their Cypher utility, which actually allows them to regress into out. mid. They're not wanting for information on two areas of the map. So then finally, they have space. They have information here with this push down. But are they going to overextend? Dodo not walking all the way through and choosing to wrap back towards A. There's two players here. Zabui blindsided. Huge timing there for FlyQuest, and Lace gets her own over from B. Rolling Thunder. Will try to be followed up upon, but Lazy Lion, they've got to back off. It's only three players alive for Passion Project, and one of them is Jazzy with an op in market. Sonder was stuck with a stun out, and now there's an op in mid. Ooh. Jazzy cannot be missing shots like that. The door of opportunity quite literally closing in her face as her teammates again make a rotation. Back towards A, but there's Cypher Util here, and they're spotted by the ult. 30 seconds left. Deep camera will be good info for Passion Project. And the rotate should allow them enough time to get a plant off. We're still two points off of Lazy Lion's ult. Jazzykin's looking for a peek with the up, and she is shut down by Thea. FlyQuest hot on the rotates. And as the plant does go down, drone spots one or two. Starbound continues forward with the rest of FlyQuest to secure another round. <laughs> the difference of that round really is FlyQuest finally getting proactive. They choose to re-push into mid in the mid round there, get Dodo up on a forward angle, and they, for the first time really, stop Fly, or stop uh, Passion Project that is, from just being permitted to walk around this map as they please. Couple missed opportunities, if Jazzy had maybe gotten that shot in mid, could have been a different world, but when you let Fly play these set retakes, they, they're just gonna excel. Yeah, 100%. FlyQuest, uh, th their game plan seems to be these mid-aggro pieces trying to catch Passion Project, oh, sort of mid-exec or mid-walk up, just like they did right there, and then the retakes, like you are saying. Now I've got ops on both sides. Lace is actually taking the op, holding that top mid, expecting Jazzykins to eventually peek it, and we're unloading the Hunter's Fury! Lazy Lion finds a tag, and there's one in response on the other side! Lace isn't giving up on this one just yet as paint shells come through. Sandra gets one, Fight Dodo a second. Okay. And FlyQuest opened things up beautifully. Yeah, lovely refight into Elbow there off their own Hunter Siri. I think that was a breach stun with the Silver Dart to set that one right up. There. Really nice stuff from Fly, and they'll set up a crossfire towards this Elbow as well. It's going to be a tough late round to win here for Passion Project. Yeah, Pash Project really hoping Jazzykins can find some kind of an opener on B, but no one's going to give her a fight there. That's where the Cypher setup is, so it's going to be down to Lazy Line and Sabui. If they can get a walk-up of their own, 50 seconds on the clock. They're going to need to commit at some point in the near future. Right now, just trying to break some of the utility on both sides. They threw a smoke into shop as well. But eventually, they are going to lean back over into this B site. They thought B was open for the ult and the plant, but that gets canceled out by Starbound. And there's still three players waiting on A. That harbor in the wings as well, ready to be the fourth. Seconds left. To shut down any take. Passion Project will still walk in. 
Oh, missed. That was Lacey's opportunity gone, but with Lazy Lion taken care of, Passion Project should have no hope of making it into this round. 15 seconds. Are they just saving, or do they want to go for this one? Seems that with the time left, there's no other option but to keep these weapons. Left. I do love Lace with the operator. I, I look, I, I see I see a Sova with the op. I'm getting like Bob flashbacks, you know, <laughs> dominating on that pick. Absolutely love it. Especially after seeing how Jazzykins has wanted to play in mid. We'll, we'll see if there's the actual op duel because it is getting saved over from Passion Project in this next round. Pretty rare to see your attacking Cypher saving an operator, but okay. Yeah. Attacking Cypher up versus defending Sova up. It just works. <laughs> Who would win? Todd Howard moment. Everything just works. Yes, All right, last round and a half here. Full dead. rifle round for both these teams. No real big ults in play either, but a couple just around the corner. We'll keep tabs on that as we get deeper into this round. Passion Project will start with mid control though. All right, Sova fans, take this lineup from the Lazy Lion. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> They heard you. <laughs> Actually baited. That's crazy. It's like, I'm not I'm not giving that up for free. You got to sub on the Patreon. I don't know. Unstable back into B main. Big old fight for Passion Project. Off the rip of Fly are also committing to it. Doduna gets the kill, provides the covering fire, and they're out of there with the opener. Yeah, Sondra just had a getaway driver ready to go. After that, <laughs> just you drive by hit setup. Hit the gas! Hit the gas! In B main. Ridiculous stuff there. But now, the lurking operator activated. Jazzykins. What can you make of this one? She's past the harbor wall. She hears the flashes, and she's got support as well. Lazy Lion heads and abates in her escape on top of the other. And now Dodo not low on HP will try and swing forward. The off shots are oh, missing, no. and she's just killing everybody. Down to a 2v2. It's still a brawl in mid. It's unstable. Scrambles to find this spike. I know exactly where do they go now? Jazzy has the ult. A retreat towards A. Yeah, it's got to be that A site. Completely open. I think Lace is going to swap over that operator for a rifle to get back into the site. Now, things to keep in mind. No utility on Sonder, but if she gets a kill, rolling Thunder online. Lace also has quite a bit to look for that util. And the last time we saw a round like this, Jazzykins got really active up into shop. Passion Project, very likely going to look for that walk up once again. Stun and a drone. Drone spots right nothing. Lace worried about a rewrap. Her teammate will join her. Stun up. Going forward. Unstable on the line. Finds her shot. And now it's just Lace. And the widest swing in the world is not going to stop her. Five to seven at the half. Passion Project putting together a real respectable one there. But with that harbor, FlyQuest definitely going to thrive a little more in this second. I think Dodonet's getting flashbacks to map number three from the OQ2 finals. 15 kills in the first half, absolutely dominating here, but still losing just barely to Passion Project. That Someone's was the story when these the teams faced off before. If she's at 15 to 8 right now, and we're 12 rounds in, last time it was 38 rounds, are, are we on course for, for another 47? Someone do the math that isn't me. I can't do math, it's very hard. Math is even harder than Valorant. I, I don't like it. Especially when it's involving Valorant, the toughest. Passion Project are about to fight like crazy in main here, though. Look at that, unstable! Fashion forward again. They're absolutely ballistic on this one with the paranoia behind as well. It's a one for one at the end of it all. Even Shake's hand will trade you Smokes Player for Smokes Player. That was a cute little setup, though. That kind of a la Ascent A main, where you have the flash and the dart as your jet is dashing into a spo smoke to spam. Yeah. I, I like that idea. They even got the kills a la carte right there. <laughs> One in peace. We'll see if the combo comes into play here as FlyQuest are going to market. Just like the little piggy from my mom's stories. Anyways, uh, they're really walking up here. Lazy Lion, unstable, look the right way. B site was wide open for the taking, and FlyQuest just have the sight. Ridiculous rounds already here. And guess what? They're New Yorkers. They're just going to keep on walking. All the way into spawn they go. Passion Project has to re-clear this space. They have one stun, a flash available as well. Jazzy, that is a beautiful jiggle for the first. Go stun for Aftershock. But the sun wins that one. Sonder established on the line. Ducks away and gets some damage. Jazzy swinging forward, finds one off her own stun. 
and now she's left alone as her teammate falls and the timer ticks. There's really no shot to make this one happen. Would have to find something now, stick that spike. There's just one not enough time, not enough up. opportunity, Whoa. surely. Jowsey's trying to go halfway. Starbound on the other side. How has she made this possible? Down to the 1v1. And Starbound steals it back. FlyQuest. They'll take the pistol. Wow! Th th Jazzy there, there trying to make no me a believer out here. That that was even close to possible. Yeah. I mean, after that market fight, right? Like, FlyQuest just somehow get a free pass to walk fully through B, shoot two players in the back of the head and get a plant off? Unreal that Jazzy can almost pull something out there. Unthinkable. Be yet, yeah, yet another, another important pistol to take away for FlyQuest. A site looking real soft this time around, too. Dart fully clears for elbow and yeah, passion project. Just gonna have to back away from this one. See if they can get anything done with these classics on the retake. One strength is Harbor Comp is once you're in the post plants, you do have a lot more utility to try and help stall out. You can slow down your opponents. It makes it tough to flood in, but There's they found the their though. gap. Already close here. Power Pixel is inside of that cove. They gotta play a little game of whack-a-mole here for Fly, but they're aware. But are they ready for it? Shot from Lazy Lion was stunning, and now this rotation is underway. The migration of FlyQuest to the B site. That's a crazy round, and Passion Project are trying to sprint quickly into market to stop this plant from going off. Don't think they're going to be successful. FlyQuest are taking their time for the moment, but unbeknownst to them, Passion Project already passed this wall. Unstable onto site. They've got a big walk up and Lazy Lion finds a headshot. Unstable all the way out here and gets a dink of their own. But it's not gonna be enough at the end. FlyQuest find a couple and PowerPixel in 58 is not making a believer out of me this round. Had a moment. Had a moment to get it close, but the classic is not gonna get it done at that range. So tied up, seven to seven now. Would you believe me if I told you the elbow to spawn was the plan all along for FlyQuest? Nope. Because it was. They did a vertical harbor wall that actually gives up full control of like that lane coming out from Wait, shot. Wait, that would actually which... explain that cove too, because they're just... Yes. That is crazy. It was actually the plan all along. They were inviting Passion Project to flood all their yes. mid players and routine players down shop onto Here. site. Pla Passion Project thinking they were clever getting on there. But what it does is leave a huge gap in the spawn that FlyQuest took advantage of. That's why they were so quick on that movement. Fully aware of that one, and actually Dota with fantastic open there. This is actually a conspiracy theory I can get on board with. Crazy cool idea if that is the case, but FlyQuest now. Player up in this round, given a gift quite early with that fight towards elbow, are going to take their time. They'll reset and look towards mid with that harbor wall blocking. Yeah, that wall very nice to threaten walking over into market. Unsure if that market door is closed right, just yet, and ooh, Lazy Lion catches a big old timing on Starbound. They are completely aware of this lurk. Just gonna hunt down now. Power Pixel baiting with a couple of jump peaks as no Lazy Lion walks up for the easy kill. Nice little combo piece from Passion Project, and now they're fully aware with darts and with the wall and everything coming in. This is a B hit. Counter paranoia is a little too early. Donut gets through and is gonna be scanned out by some of these darts here. Has to pull the track around his chassis. Just around that corner, has no way to contest this one. So Postplant secured, Passion Project, what can they do on the retake? Aftershock already in, FlyQuest fighting forward for more space in market, stun is good. So they're not better on that one, still blinded though, and Power Pixel takes advantage. So it's Lacey in the clutch, and she gets it done! That, that was just a bulldog! And those shots are absolutely stunning. That was awesome! The Red Bull cut clutch from Lace. I mean, get, where, where do we get her POV on this one? I didn't see the first few kills she got in this round, but these two oh are God. absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Sure. That's one way to convert your bonus. And now she had a couple of rounds where she was playing on those like slivers on defense too, just getting a quick one-two shots and a kill, dipping out. 
She is so quick on the reaction time. For my money, she was like the most improved player uh, of last year. She, she was impressive when she was on kind of the early rosters of Cold GX3. She had her good moments. But I feel like last year, with that complexity roster that started to go on some runs in the later game changers, was just really stepping up. She has, I feel, developed so much as a player over her few years playing here in game changers. And while well, she switched around to a couple different worlds now, playing on this initiator for FlyQuest, her mechanics are just absolutely absolutely ridiculous in moments like that. They are fantastic. Hanging up there with the very best of them here in NA Game Changers. It'll be Passion Project calling a timeout here after losing the lead for, I believe, the first time this game. Checks notes. Didn't write notes. Doesn't know. But it sounds right, so I'm going to go with that. I'll trust you. They've just got sheriffs in this round too. A little too far away to like hunt down for orbs to get ults online for, for this round. Well, the next round is going to be a big swing round for Passion Project. Assuming Lazy Lion has that ult online, maybe Power Pixel can get a little bit, of cl little bit close. Hope they can find something with those shots. This this smoke in, in B main is really interesting. It's very similar to the retake smoke that you'd put on the sign, that one that we're looking at there in main. Creates one ways on both sides, makes the attackers have to work more slowly, and it opens up for this mid walk. It does. Into mid they go, Thea. Doesn't find a single one of the players presenting themselves to her now. A stun forward. Guns picked up. It's a full flood through market in FlyQuest. Not even out of this smoke yet. Now they'll commit. Lace getting tagged up. Scan out. Shock darts in her face. Jazzykins is spamming. That's Passion Project up by two in this round. Can FlyQuest salvage? Fight towards backside. Sunder successful for her. It's a critical kill to be found. But Dodernut is oh so low, and the utility continues to rain down on these players in sight. A fight towards spawn. Jazzy, Power Pixel finding two. Poor Starbound is now left in a 1v3 with the spike lost directly in the hands of her opponents. Their opponents. 30 seconds left. Passion Project are all bundled up as three. Starbound's got the rifle, only one in the hands of Lazy Lion. How do they make it happen? Starbound around the corner, but the huge swing coming through from Jazzy opens it up for Lazy to finish the job. Passion Project just went a thrifty to even things up. Yeah, that, that is a wild way to get it done. The Utah on this round, though, was beautiful. They, they instantly had two players towards B, and everyone else was set up towards mid, which means that this rotation through market is incredibly swift, and it's the entire kit of the Breach, of the Omen, of the Silva, all being invested onto FlyQuest. If they had cancelled at that point, maybe there's a chance to salvage that round, but just great calling out a passion project. Now it's FlyQuest in the same situation Passion Project were in last round. They've got one rifle, Sheriff's to boot. FlyQuest just a few off some big ults, but if they try to go into market, they are going to be cut down. Sabui's so playing on top of that posting in market. Jazzy underneath to be able to trade her out, no problem. That angle is She's just so gross. She's gonna see the toes crossing. Shadows traveling. It's good spam, but n no kill to be found in mid. So FlyQuest hold yeah. on to this space, but have to deal with Unstable, who's walked up deep into A main and will get away now. Looks like FlyQuest on a reset into a B hit. This camera's broken. I believe it only spotted out Starbound. Not revealing too much here. But maybe Sonder thinks she was seen as well. Retake space into mid, perhaps. They know a dart was just placed there from Passion Project. Maybe providing some false info. Can they walk up and secure timing into market? Sabui still feeling a little bit safe for the time being. But that could be shut down very, very shortly. Wall down, harbor wall back up, and the split is underway. Stun does connect on Sabui, but she's not traded out. Jazzykins and Lazy Lion are here. Passion Project called in the whole squad to deal with FlyQuest, and they do it beautifully. That they do. Just choosing to give up mid in that round and having really good timings on the rotations, re-clearing that space with the dart, realizing that no one was pushing back towards the other direction, and honestly, similar to that first half, having great control of the entirety of this map. That is one of the problems with this harbor comp. You, when people play the double controller comps, or, or even sometimes with the, the Omen or the Astra, you have a lot more options to kind of send smokes towards one side of the map, waste them sometimes to sell a little bit of deceit. With, with this comp, when you're committed, you're really fully committed, and it makes it hard to cancel in these late rounds. 
One of the benefits, though, is the ultimate game. We can see three big ults online for FlyQuest. Thea with the Harbor ult, definitely gonna outpace against an Omen. Unstable, fighting into main, quick kill off the flash and backs away. But FlyQuest responding up through mid. They see the drone, Dota Nut looks for someone, but no one quite there just yet. And the push wall opens up a split back into B. I love when teams go for these kind of calls, but there are a lot of angles you have to deal with. Jazzy is the first. Backs away. Big ult. That ult is dealing a lot of damage. A kill as well onto Thea. So 5v3 now. FlyQuest start to become trapped. They're being enclosed on. The reclear is good. That's a flash run. Stable to go one for one. Lace has to do it herself. It's another stunner out of Lace. 2v3. Lazy Lion hears the footsteps towards spawn and has an angle to punish Saunders. Low HP. Saunders down. Lace now left alone. We need an ace to win this, but... Her position already spotted, the options limited, and it's just one swing away for Lazy Lion to close. And some jammies to close out the round there too. Absolutely love it. That was a gorgeous round. Obviously Lazy Lion playing it very well individually, but also Power Pixels. Uh, two flashes, the one into A-Main, and then the one over into Bobo when they tried to reflush out that area was really, really nicely done. Gave Unstable two very cheap kills in the round. Gen W pivotal. This one right here. Absolutely love that. And then coming off of the back of that ultimate right there, there's another one. That one hitting three players. Very nearly three kills there, too. They remaining. just lined up slightly better. Really good reactions, honestly, from this team. Super aware of these mid pushes that FlyQuest has been throwing out. That was the first time they went for that full split in a few rounds, but still. They're very prepared for that one. So attack time out being called. It's time for FlyQuest Red. Just starting to run out of options here. 10 to 8. This is a very pivotal round. I feel like FlyQuest would love to continue battling for this mid control. Unfortunately for them, it, it seems like they haven't really found a fighter because Lazy Lion has just been playing a little bit more passively, jiggling the angle, you know, going for a drone on the off timings. FlyQuest would love to fight up through mid and find a pick before deciding to commit one direction or another. They may end up trying to actually hard exec into a site here. They've got incredible ults to make that actually happen. Or even just slow play the start of the round with a Sova drone, something like that. Get a tag, look for the Hunter's Fury yourself. Right here. But either way, right you're here. walking into either a pretty big stack towards the A side or a whole lot of pro problems in terms of that Cypher ult towards B. You've also got another eco round coming up here for FlyQuest. So how much do you really want to commit? These are all the questions they've got to be asking themselves. There. Cage Jazzy. Spots the players in mid, and again, and activates the first layer of this defense. You see the cage goes up, the drone goes to re-clear, the reactions are very good to not take any risks. Poor passion project. Look at, look at A-Main. Unstable's got a judge in hand. Has 5.3k in the bank, doesn't care. A late rotate into A could obliterate FlyQuest. They've got one player, two players with full armor. This judge is going to tear them apart. And look at the setup too. Power right Pixel. That stun will come back online soon, but an ultimate flashes as well. Everything they need to set this judge up for success. They're walking into it. Unstable on the line, waiting for their opportunity. And none present. Place just executes them. Oh, have they gotten away with that? Power Pixel now under a lot of pressure. Has to invest this ultimate even just to stay alive. Counter out for the ult. Here comes the harder one as well as that rocket is trying to find value. And Power Pixel is knocked up into the sky. Still finds value. That was Sonder from the other side. A weapon picked up. But this plant still has to come down. And time is an issue. 20 seconds. Lazy Lion into the site. Spamming away off their own dart. And dealing with this beautifully. Starbound is down. And the chances are dwindling. Damn near looked like Lace could pull it off for a second, but not yeah, today. Yeah, that opening shot, yeah, with the Guardian, seeing the shoulder around the corner, sets it up perfectly, but that round is going to really sting for FlyQuest. They felt like they had a real chance, it's a 5v4 right, and they commit three Five ultimates down, into that play on a, on a low buy. All they had was pistols and a Guardian from Lace, and they lose them all to try and win that one out. Previously in the game, snapping those ults on the low buys paid off right big there. for FlyQuest. That time it's going to hurt. Crush them. And it could cost him the game now. 11 to 8. Rifles back up for Fly. But if they win this round, it might all be done with on this first map. Dodonut into the sight. She was still flying. 
She was still <laughs> in mid-air when she shot Jazzy Kins. That is illegal. But sometimes you you gotta take it as you get it. That's a 5v4 post plant. How are FlyQuest gonna set this up in the post? Only one player in main. That's laced with the ult for the guarantee late in the round. Tons of walls to continue stalling and unstable as the op. Knives might have to come out for Passion Project to get back into the site. Paranoia hits two players, but the Counter Hunter's Fury is going to be huge. No one can escape here and the utility is absolutely deadly. But two kills from Passion Project keep them inside this round. Stun dart for front sight there! She was stunned! Still finds that one. Trade is there. That's Power Pixel back into the site. Time dwindling. 2v2. Tap on the spike. Starbound. Not enough ammo to work with, but time. Passion Project don't have enough time. They don't have a chance to get anything in this round. Fly quest. Get away with another. Keeping Lace interested in that fight, though, is going to be big. There's not a lot of money from FlyQuest. Losing that gun going to hurt again. FlyQuest, every round from here on out feels like it's everything's riding against them. But hey, when Dodo's able to find an opener like that, absolutely nothing matters. Ridiculous first kill for FlyQuest. And using the ultimate there to stall it out. Great utility dumped back into Boba. Really putting the clock against Passion Project. Looks like FlyQuest in this round, they've got four guns, a Spectre on Thea. That's enough, that's enough quite frankly. There. A main cleared from Passion Project. The FlyQuest is fully focused on this other side. Cypher Trips is the only thing left to de defend this site, just hopes of spam, but Jazzy has to back away. So FlyQuest again in this position where they have full sight control, but this time they're going to fight forward. But she's underneath and them. And Passion Project's not ready for that. Stunning shots from Dota Nut. She'll adjust upwards for two. 4v3 in the post plant now. Yeah, this one's not looking good. We've got a jet flanking with an op. A breach completely isolated back towards spawn. None of the utility is hitting. And every shot from Dodo is hitting. Four kills on the round. It is just unstable on the other side. There's no way she should get the ace, right? Surely unstable just runs away. Doesn't give the chances. The thing is, I, I don't think it's optimal to even hunt for the ace. You've Boo. still got Thea, Dodo on low HP. Yeah, okay, the something stage. tells they're hunting still, but... <laughs> Give her the ace. What do, you, what do you mean it's not it's not optimal? Push up glasses to hunt for the <laughs> According ace. to my calculations, actually, FlyQuest losing their, their money here, losing guns, might hurt them in the long run if they plan on trying to win the game. I don't care if it's an ace or not. They're planning to win the game, and they have just won a massive round. These executes on b side have been unstoppable thus far. The combo of the Breach, Sova Utility with Dodo double satcheling in has been excellent. 23 and 15 to this point. And Passion Project... We'll mash the timeout button. Yeah, I want them to, to switch up and start fighting aggro into B main. I think the Cypher trips on B side have been completely disrespected. Every single time, Zodanut has just satcheled over them and into back site, and then is still looking to push or take very forward space. So even if, you know, her teammates are getting hit by a tripwire, there's no spam coming in because she's on top of those deep fights. Yeah, and, and you see that... Fly, or excuse me, Passion Project is even setting up in a way that they're ready for that. The Cypher is always starting the round basically in spawn, anticipating that. So, let's see what their answer is. Yeah, the, the unfortunate thing for Passion Project is Sabui can't just play on top of the market box in B and do the, the silly tens thing where she gets three kills over the smoke because it's an attacking harbor. That wall blocks off the whole passage. It's not an omen smoke that can be seen above. So uh, you are seeing some of the, the, the niceties about picking up the harbor on this map. That wall also very hard for defending teams to flood back through because of the slow that's attached to it. The orb is also really good to get out of these chokes, even if you aren't the raise, right? It can nullify the spam that would normally come in off a cypher cage or trip. You're seeing how well this comp is built for executes for fly quest. Passion project, oh, this is two chances. Spot. Yes, this should try and answer Here it that is. one. Yeah, it will be some kind of idea around fighting B main, but Unstable still with the op doesn't want to go so aggressive. Their fighting pieces are set up on the B site though. That'll be Passion Project and FlyQuest walking into them. A late peek with the op. Could be deadly here. This is a change. The op on the line. Dodo wins it. She hasn't lost a fight. Rocket ready to go. Sabui hunkering down in a corner. She'll find one, but the trade is there instantly thanks to the rocket of Dodo. 
passion project. How do they get in? Do they still want to play this one out? Low money, just looking for some spam kills through the cages. Not going to be there just yet. And as the push wall blocks off Boba, Jazzy Kins and Lazy Lion are stalled. Another wall. It is just never ending from FlyQuest. Passion Project have almost no chance to get on back through this, with FlyQuest all playing so far forward on the site. They're still trying, though. Dart. Stun. Not going to be online in time. Swing forward past the wall. Dodo Nut is waiting. And Lace is holding. The crossfire is perfection. They just can't deal with this B hit. FlyQuest have won three B hits in a row. And this time, it was after a timeout. It was a strategic shift. We're going to bring the op over there for the late swing. But Unstable did not connect the shot. That was supposed to be the difference maker. Didn't connect it had shot. to be in that round. They didn't even get a chance to shoot. Yeah. Dodo Nut was too perfect on the swing. Instantly ripped the operator out of Unstable's hands. I will find and, and now, the money is just absolutely gone. Losing those players deadly. Looking maybe to just play for the tie on round 24. They have to. Passion Project, once again, they're set up a little bit more aggressively towards B. Sabui playing close with the Judge. Yet another wrinkle for Passion Project. But FlyQuest might want to call around this. They've realized the adjust adjustment after seeing the last round. Seeing Cypher set up towards the A site after the timeout. And once again, looking to... Or maybe the first time, play around that side of the map. Jazzykins finds an opener. She's always good for it, but four on four, maybe not quite enough for Passion Project here. And they know that Passion Project is going to be set up on the strong side away from the Cypher, so they just waltz in, take a free side, and they even has the alt in the post plan as an insurance policy. Retake's going to come pretty quick, though. Drone already coming over the top for Passion Project. The players will swing through, but there is an entourage in main four fly. Stuns, ults, all that coming in, but the shot as well. Unstable has cut due down, two down to size on this site. Now recovered a rifle, but it's only them. 1v2. They're tagged by the drone. They're tapping on the spike. A stun in their face. Surely it's too much to deal with. Surely they can't get away with this one. It's only one, though. Trade from Sonder is there. And Fly Quest match Red point. make their way to match point. Fly Quest trying to steal it right back from Passion Project. As close as they might make it. Unstable looking so steady on those shots. The last Very nice. But, but look. That was that was with a sheriff. Now okay. we've got a full loadout for Passion okay, Project. I, okay, but the last yeah. map that these two teams played against each other, Dota Nut dropped 47. She was so close to 50. This time, teamwork makes the dream work. Lacey and Dodo combined now for 50 kills on map number one of this series. These two have been electric on the attack, and the action won't stop. They're heading into B. Wall up. Dodo ready. Satchels. She's gonna go into the back lines. We've seen it so many times before, but this time it's a change. Uh -oh. Mistake caught by the alt. Still that space taken in market. Here comes the ultimate from the other side. Dodo tagged Lacey, dealing some damage, but it's unstable instead to open this round. Where's FlyQuest gonna go? They'll redouble towards backside. Man, they lost Sonder. That kill in mid, huge from unstable. Three players ready for Passion Project to re-aggress into market. They've got to get through that wall. They've got to use their Hunter's Fury to clear some space, but the spike has yet to be planted. FlyQuest still looking to get that one down. Tons of utility being waylaid against them. Are they going to flood in? Second tap on the spike. That stay is sticking. And stable on the other side. No dash, just has to run out of this one. No util even to support this endeavor. They just have to win out on the fight. But it's the same for both sides. Two for one. Lace alive. She's got to be the hero in this one and finds so many opportunities as Power Pixel steals it away. It was so damn How close. How is every round so close? It was so damn How are close. They all it's just like one insane clutch performance that gets three kills but can't quite get a fourth, can't quite finish the job. This is everything I expected from this series. FlyQuest and Passion Project. Overtime. Top three teams in the league, that's a given. The last time they played was in a finals. Every map nearly going the distance. The final map going 20 rounds to 18 on bind. And we're starting it off with an OT. Of course we are, Mimi. Th these rounds are breaking my brain. Because everyone runs out of utility. And then there's still five players alive on both teams, and it just turns into a brawl on the site. It just turns into individuals showcasing what they've got. And both these teams have such players.
But it's time for a reset. Yes, they do. Overtime here. FlyQuest back on defense. FlyQuest to have a chance need to solve their defensive hap. They were looking loosey-goosey. They were leaving A completely open. No players, no info. So this time, stacking very hard around that A side of the map. Ready to get a fight going. And Passion Project are just going to feel out slowly mid-space. Passion Project ran into a lot of problems with FlyQuest walking into mid in the middle of the round. So by taking this control early, scouting out maybe for some Cypher utility, maybe for that late walk-up, they're going to stop that from being a possibility. Unstable dashing into market, finds the space. But doesn't break that Cypher camp. Wow, Starbound still has info to anchor here. And they'll swing forward past their cage lines up too, but... Only finds one of those kills. Jazzy backs away from the Lurk on the other side. It's another retake. Yeah, FlyQuest fully aware of that Cypher on the opposite side of the map. Check out where Saunders going. Just closing the door, making sure she's not going to get stopped, stomped on in the back. We saw these full main post plants get the better of Passion Project at times. They're doing it again. Can they hold on to the spike? Or will they get overwhelmed again? Swings forward for a fight. It's a one for one to start. The time working in favor of Passion Project. Power Pixel. A big kill to be picked up. And that earns them the ultimate which is invested immediately. More time being bought. More opportunities on the side of Passion Project. Another cage to stall. Another bit of spam coming through. They know they're off. And Jazzy will connect a double as well. Passion Project the first to match point in overtime. Match point. Passion Project so quick on that call there. Realizing the lean towards the A site, snapping That's into market. Game. Looks like it was going to be slow play. Absolutely not. Once they realized the defensive setup, they instantly committed to that play. Very, very nicely done. Cutting off there. I mean, oh, look, FlyQuest, they're going to need to, yes. to get something done here. It's going to be starting with some A main aggression. Remember, they started winning rounds on their attack by attacking into B over and over again. So by anything, going quickly into A here is completely unexpected. Absolutely is. Passion Project has no one here to contest. It's going to be seemingly the millionth 5v5 retake of this match, and it could be the one it ends on. And this is that wall that gives them a ton of control back alley here. This time, though, they're leaving Starbound to hold into lane. When those players creep up, they might want to fight through their wall themselves. A flash into the back there. We'll spot out and get a lot of utility to try and flush them. Here comes a fight unstable. Flicks around, pass a flash, finds their kill. Fly quest towards back lines, popping an ult and continuing to swing forward in the chaos. They're coming out on top. Passion Project still in it, though. Jazzy 1v2. What can she make of this? A walk around through alley. A player unsuspecting on the other side. 1v1. Starbound. Where are they in this endeavor? Sticking halfway. When does Starbound swing? When does Starbound commit? The moment taken. And Jazzy's got it done. 14 to 12. Passion Project. Map number one. Never come back. Every single round a nail biter there. And it's Jazzykins to secure the Red Bull clutch and finish the job. I mean, pure chaos rounds. Here in the 1v2. Was expected to be coming around on the flank, but no. Finds the first and then readjusts, getting it to half, knowing that the other cypher's gonna have to walk into her. Very nicely played out in the clutch from Jazzy. Alright, I'm I'm just overwhelmed from that map number one. Both these teams seemingly putting every piece of utility into every single round. Absolute chaos. This series has delivered yet again, but there's still a lot more left. We have map number two, where we'll have to find out if Passion Project can close this out and book themselves a match against Shopify, or if FlyQuest Red will push us to three. Find out after this.